No, the title does not deceive you. Today's video will take us on board the world's first lie flat economy seats. In 2011, Air New Zealand decided to innovate their next great idea for economy travelers with their now patented Sky Couch. This allows for one or two people to book a full row of seats, turning it into a bed. Join me today from Auckland to San Francisco in this innovative solution to sleeping on airplanes. Air New Zealand's main hub of Auckland has a large section of check-in dedicated to Air New Zealand. Sky Couch passengers still fall under the economy class umbrella, but due to my Star Alliance gold status from United, I'm able to access the premium check-in, which is off to the side, and one of the better looking check-in areas I've come across in my travels. Inside, there is a specific area for business class passengers, but the main atrium is for Star Alliance gold and premium economy passengers. And after an easy check-in process, I was able to head up the escalator within this premium check-in wing and up to immigration and security. Fortunately, there wasn't too long of a line as the SFO flight is towards the beginning of the Trans-Pacific push, so I was able to pass through the automated immigration gates and security in about 10 to 15 minutes. From there, we had to follow the winding road through the duty-free shopping before reaching a fork in the road, to the left being the shortcut to the Air New Zealand lounge, or straight ahead through the rest of the shopping and on to the central hub of the international terminal. I have to say that so far the main terminal here in Auckland is one of my favorites just in the sense of how it's decorated and organized. The Christmas lights do make it a bit extra special, but even the items that appear to be part of the permanent decor are wonderful. I even like the design of this McDonald's, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say about that. Back towards the Air New Zealand lounge, which is in the corner of the main atrium. As with check-in, Sky Couch customers don't have access to the lounge. However, Star Alliance Gold members can access the lounge, which is how I was able to get in on this ticket. Up at the top of the escalators, we see the Air New Zealand logo as decoration on one side, with the other open to the ramp for great views that I'm assuming would be better without all these clouds and fog. Past the wall with dynamic art, we can check into the lounge by scanning our boarding pass, and then we're in, although one of those agents was seriously eyeing me down once he saw my camera. When I first walked in, my first thought was that the lounge felt kind of small for a flagship lounge. As you'll see here, however, there are all different kinds of areas that aren't within view when first entering. To make things even better, there's also great views of the ramp from every room on that side of the lounge. In addition to the main working areas, there is a sizable dining area, including seating for those wanting to eat, also the large buffet section, and the bar on the other side. There's also a room with a large screen which currently had a football or a soccer game on. I found an area apart from the main area so I could grab a seat where it was a bit more quiet and had a few more available charging outlets so that I could finalize and post the video on the Christchurch inaugural flight from just a few hours prior. If you haven't checked that video out yet, go check it out on my channel. After setting my stuff down, however, I took an adventure off to the buffet. The buffet area has seating right near it as well, but has a large, great light fixture that connects the parts of the room and then another dynamic art panel in the back behind the buffet, which really ties the room all together. I grabbed an assortment of foods, but tried to keep it a bit healthier and lighter. Not pictured was the second and third servings I got of Kalamata olives. Dude loves his olives. Between these options and the ginger carrot and lemon drink, I was refreshed and ready for my 12 hour flight home, although one more stop remained before leaving the lounge. This lounge has what appeared to be about 8 shower suites, and since I had flown from SFO to Christchurch, sat for a few hours, then here to Auckland, a shower was in order before heading back home. I actually found this to be one of, if not the largest shower suite I've come across in my travels. The only thing I wish it had was some more amenities like dental kits and lotion. Although I did enjoy that there were hidden drawers and supplies for people getting ready. With that taken care of, it was time to head to the gate as we were about 5 minutes from boarding, back through the main atrium, and off to gate 6 for our flight today. There is one main hallway with all but a few gates, so it wasn't long before we reached the end at our gate where there was a quick passport check to enter the gate holding area, a somewhat normal step for US bound flights. Our aircraft had arrived a couple hours ago from Brisbane, so we were hopefully ready to depart on time. One thing that Air New Zealand does that amazes me is their boarding efficiency. 
In my flight from Christchurch to Auckland, the aircraft arrived, deplaned, cleaned, boarded, and pushed back in a matter of about 40 minutes or so, possibly less. So even though we were a couple minutes past boarding, I had faith we'd be able to make that time up. And we did, as a matter of fact, only pushing back one minute behind schedule. They boarded business class passengers first before the Star Alliance Gold passengers. They also board by rows so that they can reduce the amount of people scattered around the aircraft cramming things in overhead bins. I will say that the efficiency is unmatched. On the way to our seats, we walk through Air New Zealand's somewhat infamous business class. This is my first time seeing it in person and I do think the colors are unmatched even if the seats seem to be less than ideal. Although I do have plans to fly it next year to get a real opinion on it. Then is the 242 premium economy which seemed a bit worn out. And then we reach the economy class. Not all rows in this front section are sky couches. We actually see a large portion of extra legroom seats first, and then only actually about five rows of sky couches, and only the rows along the windows. While I settled into my seat, I will say that I always appreciate the use of mood lighting as opposed to the harsh white flood lighting. Air New Zealand's mood lighting made the cabin feel extra comfortable and homey. The pinkish color brought me back to the Virgin America days. Oh, how I miss Virgin America. Now I say settled into my seat, but what I should say is that I settled into my row, as I'm not just the proud owner of seat 45C, but 45A, B, and C, since when booking the sky couch, you get the whole row to yourself. You'll see here that the row itself looks the same as any other row of economy seats at face value, including the same pile of amenities that the other economy passengers got. Touring this seat that does look somewhat standard, but starting off with the part that we're all here for. How the heck does this seat, that looks like a normal economy seat, turn into a bed? It basically starts and ends with the two seat control buttons on the armrest. The first one controls the recline of the seat back, like the other seats. It's not the greatest recline in the world, and I honestly feel like sleeping would be tough with just the recline alone. The second button, however, controls the leg rest that is tucked under the seat. By pressing the button, the leg rest jumps up to a 60 degree angle. Technically, you can set it to any angle less than that too, but that's the default. From there, you can lift it by the handle indent on the side. You'll hear and feel it click into place, and then it sits at the full 90 degree angle. It locks itself up basically against the seat back in front of you. Putting it back down is just as easy. By lifting it up, it will leave its detent and drop back to 60 degrees. Then you can use the button to push it back down to its stored position. We were also handed out this baggie with an assortment of belts meant to help you stay safe while in bed mode. As mentioned, you can have multiple people here at a time, so there's belts for one or two people and also infants. We will see more about how to make the bed once we get in the air and finish dinner, or you can use the timestamps and just jump ahead. To help with all of this, once sitting down, the main flight attendant for my area of the cabin came by with these cards for all Sky Couch passengers explaining the operation of the Sky Couch in addition to which of the belts to use when and how. There were two windows at my seat, although we were in the midst of a rainy summer day here in New Zealand, so visibility, especially with an iPhone camera, was extremely limited. The TVs were in front, on the seat back, and although being a new style, they were quite small of a screen size compared to the other TVs and newer products. Underneath the TV was a headphone jack and USB charging port, which wasn't the quickest of chargers, but if in airplane mode, it was enough to charge my Apple Watch and phone at slow speeds. The tray tables were normal, nothing to write home about, but below them, with a literature pocket, was a universal charging port at each seat. Speaking of the literature pocket, once in flight, I realized that there was actually two separate parts to the seat back pocket. The main one with the literature, and the smaller elastic one. One of the better things about having the row to myself was that I could put my backpack under one of the seats and then spread out across the rest of the seats. You can see here that I put my backpack under the aisle seat since the other two didn't have dividers on the floor, meaning I could fully use the space which was nice because in all honesty the normal legroom wasn't as spacious as I would have liked. You can see here a couple inches between my knees and the seat back. Between that and the limited recline, sleeping could definitely be tough without the sky couch. Perhaps my biggest frustration, however, is no overhead air vents. As far as the amenities, since there was three seats in the row, we got three of everything, even though I was sitting alone. Three of these thin little pillows that didn't provide much else besides lumbar support, three blankets that were super thin and proved most useful when using two or three at a time, and three headphones, the only economy class amenity that I couldn't use all of. 
The only thing we got that the other economy seats didn't was this big ball of bedding in a wholesale amount of shrink wrap. You'll see when we make the bed later on, but it contains a mattress pad and two normal bed pillows. Speaking of amenities, I find it crazy that only business class passengers get water bottles at their seats. I found myself super thirsty, but no water for us back here in the economy cabin. While we make our way out for departure, I'll bring up that Air New Zealand isn't the only airline with this concept of a lie flat economy seat, but as far as I can tell, they were the first ones. Now there are a good amount of airlines that do allow you to block off an empty seat or two for an extra cost, such as Azores Airlines. Lufthansa even allows you to book what they call a sleeper row, or basically just paying for a row to yourself. It just doesn't become a full bed like this one on Air New Zealand. Other than that, we've seen airlines like China Airlines' branded Family Couch, Azul Brazilian Airlines' branded Sky Sofa, Air Astana's Economy Sleeper, Air Astral's Extra Couchette, Vietnam Airlines Sky Sofa, specifically on flights from Vietnam to San Francisco, London, and Frankfurt, and most recently, ANA's Couchy on their A380s exclusively. But, respecting the elders, we had to try it on Air New Zealand, the first one to implement this design and possibly still the most popular. First step once in the air is looking through the in-flight entertainment system, which once initializing the system, you'll find this main menu with a lot of the familiar choices. It does look like they keep this selection fresh, judging by the selection. While they do have some classic choices, there's also plenty of movies that have only recently come out. It was kind of fun watching how many screens around the airplane were playing the Barbie movie. Between all the options under each genre, there were plenty of choices to keep it fresh. The TV series were sprinkled within the movies, but the live TV was another category, which was unavailable until we got airborne, and then they had only the international CNN channel. I was surprised at the amount of music options available, and I know a lot of people choose to listen to stuff as they fall asleep. If that's you, you'll have different categories with different albums all full of multiple songs. They don't have a ton of games, but they do have 2024, my favorite go-to. The food and drink section I was hoping would have the menus for the flight, although unfortunately it was unavailable at this time. The map was great, not only being able to move it, adjust it, zoom in and out, you also could get all the information on your flight, 
and you could get information on any of the world's major cities, such as the tourist hotspots or just general information. The weather tab automatically loads your departure and destination airport weather, however you're also able to add any of their other destinations to your screen as well. They have seat to seat chat which is kind of fun if you're traveling with someone but not sitting with them, however I didn't feel like bugging a random stranger with some messages today. The Your Flight tab included a number of videos and texts explaining the in-flight and post-flight experiences in addition to a section with seating exercises to keep your circulation going while you're sitting in an airplane seat for potentially a 14 hour flight or so. I do also like the ability to add things to favorites, so if you do want to go watch movies, TVs, or music that you've saved, it's pretty easy to access that. Now I truly saved the best for last, and that's Air New Zealand's in-flight Wi-Fi. The reason it's the best is not because it's the fastest or anything, but because it's 100% free for the full flight. For our entire 12 hour flight to San Francisco today, we had Wi-Fi for the entire flight on unlimited devices, completely free. You can use the QR codes on the Seatback TV or just go to your Wi-Fi page on your phone or device to connect to the Air New Zealand Wi-Fi, then proceed to the link which connects you on their web page. Once connected, you're set for the rest of the flight. You can see here the speed test, it's not the fastest of Wi-Fi's you'll find, but it's free, so who am I to argue? Best piece of it being that you can connect on as many devices as you'd like. Now when I say my crew today was amazing, here's where they first really impressed me. As I mentioned, it shocks me that there's no water handed out to economy class passengers considering we're just as thirsty. However, shortly after departure, flight attendants came by to offer water to every passenger. They actually came through quite frequently actually to refill those cups as well. So even though we might not have had a water bottle, we definitely stayed hydrated on this flight. As the sun set, they came through with our dinner option for the day. I decided to go with the chicken and orzo option. You can see here it also came with a little side salad and a bread roll as well as the kapiti ice cream which was possibly the best part of the whole meal. As soon as the meal wrapped up the flight attendants came through one last time with a bottle of red or white wine for passengers who wanted it. I'm not a wine guy but I've heard great things about New Zealand's wines and the Pinot Noir was pretty tasty. Now what we really came here for it's time to set up the bed. We only need one of the safety belts, the main one, since it's just me today. This belt connects to a little loop under the center seat, and then you can kind of see how it would connect from there. From there, you need to only take the latch of the main lap belt and connect it to the latch of the bed belt, and then you're pretty much secure for your sleep. Then it's time to set up each of the leg rests to set the bed surface. First off, raising the leg rest to the first notch using the button on the armrest. This gets them halfway there, then we have to go back through them, raising them all that last click, then we can get them to lie flat at 90 degrees. Finally now, we have the full bed surface. You'll see that it's about as wide as a twin size bed, but it is much shorter, and they're very clear that they don't want your head or legs sticking out into the aisle. Anyways, we have to make the bed to get the full picture, which means unwrapping that ball of shrink wrap from earlier inside of which we find the mattress pad and two nice sized pillows. There's nothing for the mattress pad to hook onto, but it does lay across the entire surface, and while it's not the thickest thing in the world, it does cover the gaps and the belts. I then threw on some blankets and pillows. As mentioned, the economy class blankets were thin, so I started with two of them and eventually shed them off as I got warm. The pillows stacked nicely, and then the other three lumbar pillows filled the side gap nicely. And there we have it. In a matter of minutes, I've gone from a normal economy seat to a super unique economy bed. And as we get comfy, the only drawback of this space is that you aren't really able to lay down with your legs straight out. But if you bend them a bit, you'll be just fine, especially if you're alone in the space. For now though, I'm gonna get some sleep. I woke up about seven or eight hours later only because I had a timer set on my phone. Otherwise, I could have slept the whole night through, only waking up slightly a couple times when people would walk past noisily, which I guess is the drawback of being in an economy class space. I went to use the restroom located between economy and premium economy and was told not to do that afterwards, but you'll see the lavatory is a nice space with plenty of room to stretch out. Interestingly enough, they had spaces for amenities, but no amenities actually in there. The wall also had this nice bookshelf decoration. It is worth noting, however, that the economy class lavatory was about half this size with just white walls. 
I also mentioned previously how good the crew was about supplying water to passengers and even throughout the flight they had a self-serve water station in the galley. You'll see here that while working I was leaning up against the wall of the cabin. In this way I could stretch my feet straight out and not have to curl them. I did this for probably about an hour or two while I got some work done and waited for breakfast while finishing Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. About two hours from San Francisco, we were served our second and final meal of the flight. This was a breakfast meal since we were arriving around 11 in the morning. I went with the omelette option, although I couldn't really understand what the other option was. This meal was definitely lacking some of the sustenance and oomph that the dinner had, although that is quite common for airline breakfasts, unfortunately. Between the omelette, potato wedges, fresh fruit, and yogurt, the black tea was my favorite part. Once again, though, it was great to be able to spread out across the row and multiple tables. It may not be the level of breakfast in bed we had on the Etihad apartment, but it's a heck of a lot better than the rest of economy just across the aisle from me. Not long after that, the sunshades came up and it was time to pack up for landing. The only drawback being that all of this equipment for the bed takes a little while to set up and pack up, unless you just throw it away all lackluster in sorts. I try to keep things in as nice a shape as possible to help make the process easier for getting them to cleaning after the flight. After initially bunching up the bedding, we had to release the legrest back to their 60 degree setting. Then using the seat adjustment buttons, we brought the legrest all the way back in. And lastly, we undid the recline of the three seat backs. The bedding took a little longer to fold up and pack up, first off the two pillows. Then the folded mattress pad. Not one, not two, but three blankets. And then we count the throw pillows. One, two, and three. And as I was packing up the bed, the flight attendants came through the aisle with a basket of lollies, and I decided to go with the red one to end my flight. And by the time I was packed up, I was back to being a normal economy class seat. But fortunately, we were treated to a beautiful arrival as we came in from the south on the surfer arrival for San Francisco, so keep your eyes peeled for Monterey, Carmel, Santa Cruz, the Monterey Bay, and Santa Cruz Mountains, which carry us right into the Bay Area. And as we pass over Monterey, Santa Cruz, and the rest of the Monterey Bay, I'll mention that Air New Zealand has had a long-standing history, not just in the U.S., but San Francisco and California specifically. Not one of the founding airlines of Star Alliance, but in the first wave of additions joining the Alliance in 1999, there's obviously a close bond between Air New Zealand and United Airlines, the largest airline in Star Alliance. And we saw that strengthened in September of 2004 when Air New Zealand first launched their Auckland to SFO flight. This was eight years after they launched LAX, their first US flight. This is part of the reason for the long-standing success of Air New Zealand at SFO, as not only is there so much tourism cooperation between California and New Zealand alone, but SFO is the largest launch point for Trans-Pacific flights from the U.S. by U.S. carriers. So there's plenty of people connecting in SFO, including people I met in the lounge connecting on this flight off to Virginia, Florida, and Copenhagen, which I have to believe is closer going westbound from Auckland. Whatever. Basically, after LAX, SFO has been Air New Zealand's next prioritized destination, and throughout my life I recall seeing them flying over my house with a number of different aircraft, including their launch with the 747s. Time to debrief what could be the best travel hack out there for people who struggle to sleep on airplanes. This flight had business class selling for about $3,500 US dollars for a one-way ticket and normal economy for about $800. 
I was able to pay $1,300 and get the Sky Couch, which I found to be more than worth it. It's worth reminding y'all that you can have up to two people in the Sky Couch, and pricing wise it's not a perfect split of the extra cost, but it does make it a bit less per person at least. That being said, depending on the size of the two people sharing the space, I could see it being a bit cramped, considering you have to curl your legs up a bit anyway. But as far as a solo traveler, it would come down to the comparison of premium economy versus the sky couch. On most flights, the cost seems comparable, but the experience comes down to what you value more. Premium economy definitely has a bit more privacy and more dedicated space for each traveler, but it still has a normal recliner seat with a bit better recline and legroom. The sky couch, on the other hand, is really just a normal economy seat until bedtime. The big perk of daytime is obviously having the row to yourself, but legroom is average at best. Come nighttime, however, you get a space about as wide as a twin size mattress, just a bit shorter. Personally, I'm able to sleep on airplanes, which I am grateful for, even if the sleep is somewhat interrupted. When I'm able to prop my feet up, essentially being at more of an angle, the sleep gets even better, and this seat allows me to lie completely flat for half the cost of business class. Personally, I'd sacrifice the business class meals, lounge access, privacy, and all of that in order to get some real sleep. Even still though, I found Air New Zealand's economy class meals and services to be great for this flight, and having Star Alliance priority meant that I could get expedited check-in and lounge access even with an economy ticket. For those of you not holding Star Alliance priority, a couple notes on Air New Zealand. First off, I've heard that they're extremely strict about baggage weights charging for even half a kilo overweight. I've also heard 50-50 experiences with catering and crews, and as a US native, boy does that sound familiar. Maybe I was lucky on my flight, but this crew was awesome and the food was not bad for an economy class meal. I'm curious though, if given the choice between economy, sky couch, premium economy, or business class, all at their respective price points, what would you pick for your flight down under? Let me know down in the comments, and until next Sunday, safe travels, and I'll see y'all next time.